I am Shwebal Chatterjee, Managing Director of Loknath Chatterjee and Sons, Precision Tools Private Limited. I am from DLC Global SCM Committee, Kolkata Chapter. The subject of my talk is how to get a customer. Now see, as part of my profession, I'm an entrepreneur. I'm a manufacturer of precision tools. We have a factory in Kolkata and we export our products to various parts of the world, especially to Switzerland, to Germany, to the United States, Canada, Australia, New Zealand, and South Africa. So my job is traveling and my subject is international business, international marketing. As a passion, I've been teaching for a while. For the last 20 years, I've been teaching in the prestigious business schools in Kolkata. And as you know, the students always have something to ask, something out of the syllabus. And one day, a student approached me and said, sir, it's so good to learn all the mathematics and the logic and the statistics and the business models. But then, how does one really get a customer? I come from family business and my father asked me this question. Do they teach you this in a business school? Now, probably this was one of the best questions that anyone ever asked me. And this would be the subject of my talk today. How does one get a customer? Now, the normal approaches of getting a customer is searching the internet, looking at uh, the chambers of commerce, asking uh, the EPC, Export Promotion Councils, and so on. And they would obviously give you a lot of information. In fact, the information that they have is so much that possibly there is one small diamond in a huge pile of straw, which is impossible to pinpoint. So I don't think searching for information from the internet or otherwise is a good idea. To my mind, and I've been uh, in this kind of business for the last 40 years, well, I think the best way to find a customer is to attend the international fairs and exhibitions and find out for yourself. Find out whether you have the right product, whether you have the right packaging, whether you have the right delivery times, the right pricing, the right finish. And then and only then, you could think of finding a customer. I would like to share with you my experiences of visiting the international trade fairs and exhibitions. Today, if you search the internet, you will see so many of them. You know, there are places in Shanghai, in Bangkok, in Singapore, in, in the US, in New York, Chicago, Hanover, Cologne, Dusseldorf. To my mind, for those who would like to uh, look at engineering products like I do, Hanover is the best in the world. There is an exhibition called EMO, Engineering Manufacturers Organization. And this exhibition takes place every alternate year, once in Hanover, then in Milan, and then in Chicago. But then, if you ask the experts, the Hanover is the best. Do you know why? Because Milan and Paris and Chicago have too many distractions. Huh? People go there with their families, with their wives, and spend a little time in the exhibition and all the rest in exploring the city and seeing the delightful attractions that the city has to offer. Hanover is a boring place, but then it is the mecca for machine tools. From all over the world, people come to visit the Hanover exhibition. Let me tell you that when I visit Hanover, I don't have to do a world tour. All my customers, from even from Australia, New Zealand, Canada, USA, of course, Germany and Switzerland, they're all there. So in one go, you can have all the meetings. And then back to our question, how does one get a customer? You look at the exhibition halls, the hundreds and thousands of machines and machine tools and parts and spare parts. You know, it's so exciting for me. When I think about Hanover, 
the smell of the paint of the new machines, the chick, 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 the sounds of the hydraulic and the pneumatic things, machines operating, and then all the people, the hundreds and thousands of people. And mind you, the tickets for the Hanover exhibition or any exhibition are expensive. So anybody who is there is really there because he has an interest. Either he is a manufacturer or supplier or, like you, just someone who wants to find out. It is there that you can see your competition. It is there that you can find out the pricing structures, the discount structures, and everything. Honestly, as a kid, I had gone to the Hanover exhibition with my father. And that was the time when we first had our German customer. Somebody walked into our stand, looked at our product, and they said, hey, you don't make them in India. You must be getting them from Japan. No, no, we said we do make them in India. What is the price? My father said, this is the price. And then he said, uh, it can't be true. It can't be that cheap. Are you sure? Does it include freight? And that was the start. That was how we got our first customer in Germany. And then, honestly, from then, there was just no stopping. And then, fair after fair, we exhibited. And we got so, uh, our next customer was from Canada. There was someone who walked into our stand and he said, oh, you export to Germany, do you? Well, that means you must have a good product. Let's have a look. Let's have a try. And a shake of hands, and they became our selling agents in Canada. And they're still there. And I'm talking of a story that happened about 40 years ago. So I would say the, one of the best ways in which that one can get a customer is to visit trade fairs and exhibitions. It does not have to be the EMO only. You know, you, you can belong to any other kind of subject. I have seen fairs, trade fairs, dentistry, dentistry fairs, where, you know, you deal with medical equipments, dentist chairs, and so many things. Food fairs, fashion fairs. I've even attended a fair, a hairstyling exhibition. Just believe me, hairstyling, huh? even that is a subject which is like a fair, and you could go there and see the hairstyling equipment, the combs and brushes and saloons, and so many wonderful, wonderful things. Now, having said this in class, what happened was that one of my students took me so seriously, I didn't understand, but then my travel agent told me, sir, one of your students is going to Shanghai, to China, because he said that you asked him to go there. I said, what? I had no clue. He had asked his father that Sir has told us to visit an exhibition, and Shanghai is one of the best, he said, in this part of the world. He went there, and then he ultimately found someone with whom his company could liaison, and he has already started importing a lot of electrical equipment and stuff, and I am so happy. I'm so happy that my advice really worked. Now, my piece of advice was just speaking out of experience because this has given me the little success that we have been able to achieve in the last 40 years. And I still would give anything to go to either Emo in Chicago or Hanover or Milan and Paris. And this time, just sit back, relax, and watch the fun, watch the beauty of it all. You know, the, the magnificent way in which now the CNC machines are working and so many advancements in terms of laser, automatics, and, you know, it is amazing. I really wish you could do this, and I'm sure, absolutely sure, that this would give you a real customer if you want it. But then, just getting a customer is not enough. We have to keep the customer. In order to keep the customer happy, there are some things that we have to keep in mind. Number one, quality. What do we mean about quality? You see, quality is such an aspect that most of us Indians 
we do not know what it is. It's not just measurements, but it's also the look, the finish, the kind of cosmetic finish that uh, is expected out of your product. And in the engineering terms, what we do is we apply a cosmetic finish by black oxidizing first and then grinding so that the uh, uh, parts and portions which are unground will look black and shining and nice to see. Just like when you buy a lipstick or a cosmetic, even the box looks so nice, your packaging also has to be so nice. So, quality. Then comes delivery, and this is one of the most important things that a buyer would be demanding. Deliveries, on-time deliveries. I, I can understand that it is so difficult. It is so re really difficult because we live in India and we have so many problems that the foreigners don't understand. Strikes and protests and stoppages and so on. But then we have to make sure that our delivery is on time. What do we mean by on time? You know, like every culture has a sort of a limit. For example, when we say six o'clock in India, if you arrive for a meeting even five past six, it's fine. Up to 10 past, it's fine, but not more. In Germany, six o'clock, they also have a limit and allowance, but the allowance starts at 10 to six and finishes at six, which means that if anyone comes after exactly 6 p.m., he's late, he won't come. He will come to the gate and call and say, sorry, I'm sorry I couldn't come because of some work. It is so shameful to be late. If we keep that in mind, we as Indians, then we know what it is to be on time. And on-time delivery, I would say, is one of the aspects, the key aspects of success in international business. As I was saying, time. Time is so important in Germany, in all parts of the Western world, I mean. And uh, the concept of time, I would just like to share an anecdote, not an anecdote, it's a real story. Some of our German friends had come to India and uh, my wife and I, we wanted to invite them at home. So the Germans asked, what would be a good time? Ah, so my, my wife said, 7.30, 8 in the evening. This is not a business appointment. So, you know, we, we were a little relaxed. The Germans got confused. So one of them said, you mean 7.38? I said, yes, yes, 7.38, between 7.38 and 7.40 would be fine. Ah, the German is relaxed. He has his little time. Half an hour is too much for a German. Like, the German would come at 7.30 and wait till 8 o'clock to ring the bell. That is the understanding of time. They are so precise. They are so precise that we can't understand it. But the, that is my story. That is how we should treat them. Time is religion. If we keep that in mind, I think we shouldn't have a problem. And with that, I would say, good luck with finding a customer. Good luck with exports. Opportunities again, so that I could be with you and share my experiences again. Thank you indeed. Thank you.